let's think of uh, the apple as the earth. Okay? Let's see as the earth. How much of the apple do you think it's soil? Mm. What? The skin? Does everybody agree? The inside? Somebody said the seeds? As a volume, let's say, if this is oh. earth, how much is oh. soil? Oh, yeah. first of all, isn't there 70% water? Yeah, 10 Cover us in soil. earth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but let's put the volume of the earth. Okay. Of the okay. land. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the land, the, the land not the land, the earth, like yeah. solid. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the peel. The peel? Yeah. You all agree with the peel? Um, yeah. The part that you can use, because, like, I guess, I don't know, a stone can be technically... Uh, Called soil because you can't actually grow anything on it. Like on okay, you're getting you're getting deeper. You're getting deeper. But oh, okay. you were very right. It's the peel, mm -hmm. yeah. the peel. So it's ten percent of the whole volume of the earth that actually we can call soil. Mm -hmm. The rest is just other things. It's on plates. It's you're going deeper and deeper and uh, things I don't really know to talk about. <laughs> but it's not about soil. And how much of this soil, of the peel, we can use to grow our food? Mm. Right now, small percent, the most fertile is between 10 and 15 per centimeters, maybe. And on some places deeper, if it, it's more fertile ground, uh -huh. it depends on soil, soil type. Okay, and do you know a percentage, more or less? No. Anybody? I can say uh, less than 1%. It's, it's close to 1%. So, so if this is earth... Wait. <laughs> I will try to do that. <laughs> like soil in the terms that uh, Christos is talking about, if what we call to the children dirt. Dirt. Don't touch it. It's dirt. It's dirt. So this is like as briefly is soil that we talk about. Yes. Like the dirt. So if this is earth. This is where we can grow our food, and this is where actually our life depends on. And not the whole no. space of the earth. No. Just certain parts. Just this. This is topsoil. <laughs> <laughs> And this 1%, every year, we're losing a lot of it. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we're version. not giving back to the system, we're not building the soil, we're just what's, using what's it. Big? And we are also, like in two ways, in a material way, we are not giving back. And in the quality way, we are destroying the fertility of the soil itself, mm -hmm. like yeah. the microbial. Uh, biodiversity is going down as well, so in mm -hmm. two ways. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Uh, you No, I want to... Uh, Sarah? Uh, isn't a uh, big part of the 1%, uh, like 70% of the 1% used to um, uh, farm animals, so we already have... Like there are many reasons why, but what is the mechanism we are losing topsoil? Tilling is also a reason. Tilling is a very good reason. I know you know. Wait. <laughs> but it's very you really you really know it. What is tilling? Tilling is bringing um, oh. money. Ah, okay, okay. It's doing this to the earth. It's actually it's, it's like these machines that take the thing that is undead and take it and reverse it. Yes. That is practice that is using like. Thousands of years now, with different machines. Uh, no, uh, Salim? Uh, microorganisms. No. What is? Yeah. What is the mechanism that we are using topsoil? What is? Uh, I think it was fed. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, I think pass, it was fed. Pass. 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 Like loss of the uh, top, like top soil, uh -huh. by water or by like uh, like any means floods or like because of by wind, by water, by 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 lots of things. And where does it go? Uh, to like <laughs> to the rivers. I don't know to down like. And then to the to the sea. To the sea. Yeah. So I, I 
There is another way and is huge in this region, for example, that is cities. We are building. Uh, it's causing erosion. Yeah, yeah, but we are losing. We are losing, the we are losing the are losing topsoil because we are using. We are putting concrete on yes. topsoil where we could actually grow. It's actually very, very nice. If you yeah. go around, for example, here in this town, uh, you will see the new, the new houses that have been built in the last 50 years, uh, and they are taking all the countryside. And actually, there were fields around even this building that was uh, yeah, yeah, yes, for agriculture. Yeah. So we got to the point of why we want to talk about soil. Do you understand why we want to talk about soil? Because our life depends on that, and we have a huge problem of losing topsoil. And if we don't do something about it, there is some prediction about 2050 or 2060 that we will actually not be able to grow food. And this is not climate change about saving yeah. dolphins and uh, animals. It's actually, we are screwed mm -hmm. if we don't do something about the way we grow food. But I think the first thing is that people are completely unaware of this. Ah, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's why we're talking about no, it. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. The first is that people don't know that there is a problem. They think, like, yes. there is all this soil around. <laughs> so it's very, it's very recently that people started to care about soil and talk about soil, not about land, but talk about what there is inside soil. It's very recently that actually scientists started studying the life inside soil. And we discovered that soil is such a living organism that we can't even imagine. There is more life inside soil than probably there is outside of the soil. Think about it. The thing you're walking on has more life, potentially has more life, this soil does not, but potentially can have more life than you can see on top of the soil. And we're talking about birds, animals, trees, plants, thousands of species of plants. But there's millions or billions of types of microbes, of worms, of insects that live below the earth. And we don't interact with them because we don't give importance to what is underneath our feet. But I'm here to give a bit of importance of what is underneath our feet. Because actually, it's one of the keys to reverse what we are doing to, to the earth, to understand the soil. So that's why there is so many more and more enthusiasts about soil. They talk about soil, you're going to hear soil and soil and soil. And also I'm very recent on that. I'm not very uh, specialist, but I became very enthusiastic through some books and through observing and interacting with, with, with soil. Um, so what we're going to do about soil is that we're going to do a hands-on uh, activity, um, splitting into groups. And we're going to do something very simple, but very, um, how to call it, pedagogical <laughs> about our interaction with the soil. And it's going to be first about the inorganic um, texture of, uh, of soil. So soil, in, in a way, in a very mathematical way, the inorganic part of the soil, let's say the more dead part of the soil, uh, is... Uh, is, con is, uh, is uh, consisting of clay, sand, and silt, okay, which is just different size of particles. I have put here the sizes of the particles. You don't really care to know them, but anyway, so the the, the smallest um, it goes from the smallest to the to the biggest particles, and this is the texture of the soil. You all know clay. Mm -hmm. You all have touched clay, and you know that clay has some properties. What is the properties of clay? Uh, it's sticky. It's sticky, sticky when it gets wet. wet yeah. If not, then it's not sticky. No, 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 no. Yes? And doesn't uh, allow water to go mm -hmm. down. Doesn't okay. allow water yeah. to go down. Okay. What else? It retains the nutrients. It retains the nutrients and it retains water, so in that way it, can be pl it has plasticity. Mm -hmm. now that's why humans have been using clay to make all kinds of things. Yeah, it's okay. also become very hard under the heat uh, pressure. Yes, and then you can process it and then do lots of things. And what about sand? Filters. Filters? What? Filters? Like let, the water, let, the, let the water infiltrate. Let the water down, no? Mm -hmm. And air. And air mm -hmm. also pass through. Mm -hmm. 
So it's very simple, we can all understand it with our senses, but it's not a science. But to understand, silt is somewhere in between. So we just created what? silt. Silt. S I L T. Ilis, like the Stalinka. Ilis. Silt. Ilis. So all these are invention of humans. Actually, there is no clay and sand. Just do translation in this language for the silt. For Serbian, does anyone know? Bread. 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 Ilis. What I need to say is that it doesn't really matter how it's called. So, yeah. What I'm trying to say is that it's a human invention. That, like in nature, nature doesn't say, ah, I'm clay, ah, oh, I'm sun, oh, I'm silt. Nice to meet you, okay, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, so, so it's just dividing categories of molecules, of molecules, just that we can actually recognize them. And silt, that you can keep in mind that it's something in between sand and clay. That's all you need to, to, to keep in mind, if you want, if you don't want to. So, there's a very easy way to understand when we are looking at the soil, to understand what it is made from in a texture way, not all of it, but in a texture way. Because we have gravity, and gravity can show us different size of molecules. I'm not going to go very deep, but it's a very fun and easy way to understand what the soil we're looking at is made from. Many people know, but just by just looking it and touching it, you can know after some experience what is it made from. But it, the most like precise that you can actually put percentage of it, uh, it's doing a jar test. That's why I have six jars here. Ooh, no. dun, 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 dun. We have six jars, so I'm gonna ask you to split in six groups. Okay. So find some soil. Go around. It doesn't have to be from outside here. Explore. Find the soil that you would like to know what it is made from and then put another one third of, uh, of water and then the rest just leave it open, just leave it uh, empty. Okay? And reminder, one third of soil, it can be even a bit more but it's okay. It can be <laughs> I'm saying just uh, a bit of water and then just a bit of empty space here. Okay? Because we need to... Ah yeah, when you finish, you close it. And then you start, and then it, uh, you start doing the barman, and then you leave it on a place. To st uh, so we did a jar test, okay? Um, in order to actually, if you want to test the soil, if you want to be sure what it is, you would take two to three samples, let's say, of, from each plate, just to be sure that the one is not going, uh, it's not going to mislead you or something, you know? Um, so you do a jar test. Why do you do a jar test? Okay, for fun, yes, you can do it for fun. But there's also some uh, important reasons why you can make a jar test. Uh, one very, one very common reason is to know what type of soil you have, so that you can know what type of plants can thrive in this type of soils. So first thing. Um, if you're going to design something or you want to plan, it's good to plan something, um, you're going to have a list and you can find many resources of which type of plants, like which type of soil. Okay? Um, I'm not going to explain why some plants like some types of soil, it's a bit more complicated, but what you need to keep in mind is that some plants will have a hard time in a more clay soil and will uh, some other plants will have a hard time in uh, in a sun soil. And this nature already knows. So these plants will not grow normally there. But you as a human would say, I want a papaya in a, in a sandy soil in the north of Europe. Where? Maybe it's not a good idea. This can show you, okay? And uh, many things you can learn also by experience, but this is also a very nice way to know what type of soil you have in your garden, etc., etc. This also is used a lot in natural buildings. So, because natural building you want to build with the soil you have next to you. So you want to know exactly the percentage of sand and soil you have. 
in order to make the mixture for making uh, coal, for making a clay, sand a mixture and put straw and then build with it. Okay, um, it's technology, but this is as as low tech as it can get. You can do it in any type of place. Um, so in order to make the measures, normally you will have to wait 24 hours for all the particles to settle down. By half an hour, you already have an image of how much more or less is your um, is the type of soil you have. Okay. Um, so let's. Ah yes. Sorry, I have to ask. And faculty, we uh, a couple of times we took different samples of, of uh, the soil, and but uh, uh, is is this in, is this enough just to take a, a surface? So sample because we took one from 10 centimeters and one from 30 centimeters. Yeah, it depends from what for what type of thing you want it. If you want to do natural building, normally you would go deeper than 30 centimeters. If you okay. want to know about plants, that was my intention now, mm -hmm. then you go on topsoil. Okay. I mean topsoil you can put a bit out, but then you don't want to dig very deep. And there's many techniques where you can go on to finding different sampling. You even, you, if for some uh, earthworks, you even have to go to one meter down. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, this is more details, but I'm not trying to give the general mm -hmm. image. Okay. But thank you for... Uh, just to recognize, I would say, like, whenever you do, just take, take a little bit uh, what we call biomass, take it a little bit by the side, and uh, collect more the mineral part. <laughs> yes. So, um, also the living, the organic matter, as I, I said here, is also good sometimes to understand how much percentage of topsoil you have in your uh, in your farm, if you are interested in. So, just by staying for some minutes there, I mean you can clearly say the difference between two layers. Okay, at least two layers. The two layers are very clear to understand the difference because they're very sandy and very rocky. Sometimes you also find rocks if you put inside and they go to the bottom. And then there is a, there is a thing, <laughs> there is soil, and, um, and this is a mixture of clay and silt. Okay, and when it really settles down, you may find that there is three layers. Okay? You may also find that there's only two layers, because this means that you don't have any silt, or you don't have any, probably no silt, no clay, it's hard to find. So, then, uh, you go back to this, you go back to analyzing, now you go to analyzing things, brain. Now, until now, we're only using our, our senses, we see, we smell, we try to understand what type of soil we have. And now we go a bit to the science part of that, which is like you try to measure, if you want to be very accurate, you try to measure of how much percentage of each you have. And then you can make out actually what type of soil you have, I have a soil of 70%, no, 30% sand, 40% silt, 30% clay, let's say. Why do we fucking care about that? Well, it goes back to what I was saying, that um, do I have a nice soil or do I have a problematic soil, let's say, that has lots of sand and very low clay, so I'm, I'm going to adapt to this type of soil or uh, I can go wild and I can go on whatever I want to do, okay? So here, I draw a um, uh, triangle, okay? Of which you can do, uh, you can find the, the percentage of two of these things, and you can find the type of soil you have. And I put a bingo here because the type of soil that we permaculturists love and uh, agriculturists should love, but they don't know about it, no. many, is the loam. Okay, loam is a good percentage of silt, clay, and sand because you actually need all of it. Your soil you want to be. Sandy, the water goes out, clay to keep some moisture and nutrients, and silt to let you have a bit of both inside there. And 
just one thing about this triangle. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I think that in all of our languages, there are quite beautiful words for all these types of soil that are around. Yes. So it's not it, because percentages are a little bit like well, yes, yes, yes. But yes. then there are words exactly describing these types of soil. Yes, I mean if you ask your grandparents or whatever, they, they probably have words that they were using for types of soil that now we are not using. But they used to know that, but just looking. And actually, in the garden of the neighbor, uh, they have more of that, uh, but in ours, no. And, uh, ah, if you go to this mountain, under this uh, cave, you will find the... So, yes, there is. There is, there is also a way to, to describe in sometimes areas and landscapes in the, like, uh, old uh, dialect, uh, local style. Yeah. So, yes? The Earl of Silt is something in between sand and clay. I mean, you said that the clay gives the nutrients, the sand, the water. It's not, it's not like, let's say, a clay has the nutrients, sand is this and this. All does everything, but just in different... Um, they, mm, I, would, I, would answer, uh, I would answer in this, that, uh, for example, in the water, let's say, the way that we filter it, like in each level something stays. So this means that we have more diversity of how the water is, is floating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For example, if we have only sand, the water just goes out and it floats. If we have clay, maybe we can compact easily. Mm -hmm. So when we have diversity, ooh, again, <laughs> <laughs> again, so the water creates a nice rhythm and flow. Also the fungi create nice rhythm and uh, uh, like um, parts of oxygen to pass. So it's, it's creating more, let's say, inhabited place, more oxygen-friendly place, more diverse place for our microorganisms to live. Mm -hmm. I want to see more of what the fungi do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the plants and the microorganisms need air and water. That's why it's perfect if it's sandy and clay together. Yes. So we, 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 we started with the inorganic texture of soil, which is something you can grasp on and very easily understand what, is, what we are talking about, because it's very close to the uh, mathematical way of seeing things. But this is just the base to go away from that. Like we, from a culture, just start from that, but we don't really care so much about that. What we really care is life inside soil. But in order for life to exist and thrive, we have to have a good balance of of that. Okay, this is all the this is why we are talking about that. Like soil is the base of life of all that we see above it. So if you have a healthy soil, you have a healthy ecosystem. And for example, when we don't have loam, but we have another category, we just maintain ourselves, but we don't say, ah, we have a lot of clay, let's put some sand in it. No, we don't do it. You know what we do if you combine clay and, and sand and water and mix it? Someone has an idea? We make plaster for the walls. So when we have a clay soil, we just organize our uh, garden or our work for the clay soil. So and we build on top of it. So we create life over it. In a sandy soil also. We don't put sand in a clay soil. Yeah. What's plaster? Plaster is so vast. Yeah, you want plaster on the earth. Plaster. No, we don't plaster. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the difference between the intervening philosophy of, uh, uh, of going to an ecosystem and the observing and interacting philosophy. You observe what you have and you play with it. And then the balance will probably come in a hundred years. Because there is a way to restore a balance. Or maybe the ecosystem there, it has to thrive with this type of soil because it was always like that. You don't want to bring it to your measures. You just want to work with what you have. Okay. On that, um, what do we define as unhealthy soil? Because I understood, but then we have plenty of soil. Mm -hmm. okay. Good. We're going to that. Okay. Very good question to, mm -hmm. to introduce yourself. Uh, so, what we do care 
about our soil a lot, except that is the organic matter that we have in, uh, in our soils, okay? And I have a sample of a, a stock from the neighbor, a bit of soil, that is full of organic matter, and maybe you can check the difference between the, the soil you took and this type of soil. Does anybody know how does a soil full of organic matter? I'm sure you have seen it and tested it. Humus, yes. How how does it? How do you understand that it's full of organic matter? Yeah, except from putting a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's humid. It's humid. Dark color. Dark color. Dark color. You can. I don't know how to explain, but when you have it in, in uh, it has a specific texture when you hold it in that. Yeah, it does. It's not like dry. It's, um, I guess if there is a box and you know insects inside the soil, that means it's organic. If there is what? Insects and the bug. Ah, yeah, it's full of life. Yes, it's full of life. Probably you find headworms by just, by just taking it. You are very lucky. We found. We found. Yes. Very good. Headworms or not? Like them. And where do you where do you remember yourself finding this inside? Finding this type of soil. Where? 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 In a forest, for example. In a forest, down from a tree, if you take out the leaves. Then you will find this beautiful, amazing, rich soil that's mm -hmm. been there for many and many and many many years, and it's been building up humus. Okay. So in this type. Of uh, can you just mention how long does it take to mm -hmm. make one centimeter of the soil? Ah, you can say if you. Thousands of years. So when we pollute just a centimeter of the soil, it's gonna take thousands of years to give it back, to, to make it... Um, of, yeah. of natural, yeah. of a natural yeah. process. Yeah. 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 But yeah. we, yeah. in permaculture, want to speed up this process. So that's the difference, <laughs> that's the difference and that's, uh, that there's a difference between natural farming and permaculture. We are not gonna wait for the natural mechanism to build what, what we have already destroyed, but we want to speed up this process <laughs> and bring, restore ecosystems as fast as possible. And this can be controversial, we can talk a lot about that, but this is what permaculture is bringing in, and it's generally a general acceptance about, among permaculturists. That we are intervening in the natural ecosystems in order to bring them back, and it's a necessity, because we see climate change, destruction of the air, and we want to go against that to regenerate the ecosystems. So it's like a fighting power, of destructive power. No, we're gonna regenerate. Mm -hmm. So it's going against. Us. It's uh, actually pulling back. It's pulling yeah. back the, the damage. It's like because it sustain it. No, we don't want to sustain. It. We want to, we want to gain because the other thing is going faster. Yes. She say that one centimeter layer is you needs thousands of years to build, and one till like. <coughs> It's one second to make. Okay, it needed some years of our human revolution to make it. But can you imagine that a machine can come and do like this, and all the top soil go up over there? So, so it's like it's needing to, to, to accelerate the process. Mm -hmm. So, we got very deep. I see your faces like. Maybe. Maybe take a second, close your eyes. Take a second, close your eyes. We take some moments to also uh, think about the activity and what we have talked about right now. And maybe digest all this information because I know it's a lot. And maybe as we have closed eyes, you can imagine what type of life you think exists inside the soil. Mm -hmm.
and I will ask, how many of you have seen mushrooms? Growing. Growing. Growing, not just bite them. Growing. In a forest. In a forest. In a forest. In a forest. Uh, not in our dream. Yes. No, no, no. Ah, yes. Ah. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> So how many of you have seen mushrooms? Can you raise your hands in the forest? Ah, very nice. Okay, very nice. I'm glad. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's actually now it's if you live in cities, it's not very common to see a, a, a mushroom. So we are very lucky as humans to see the evidence of the existence of fungi. Mm -hmm. So, mushrooms are the fruits of fungi. And I will, somebody will ask, what is a fungi? It's a fungi! <laughs> it's, a fungi. Yeah. it's a fungi! Why is it a fungi? <laughs> because? What? Why it's, uh, why it's so awesome, fungi? <laughs> because you can't categorize it. Because um, mm -hmm. animal kingdom, of course. It's one thing. It's one of uh, very rare um, the tree towers that's um, like. It's very. It's very hard to. Um, uh, it has a place in an ecosystem that's very hard to. Um, replace. replace. Ah, okay. Very hard to replace. Yes. It's like a neuron. Okay. It's like a neuron. Yes, it makes like plants communicate with each other. Ah, exactly. It's, well. a, it's the biggest organism on Earth. Mm -hmm. yes. It has a it's technical? Uh, uh, fungi actually invented uh, soil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Ah. Mm. If it wasn't for fungi, it wouldn't be for soil. If it wasn't for soil, it wouldn't be for us. Mm -hmm. You understand the, so the importance? <laughs> yeah. This crazy guy in Fantastic Fungi documentary says it's Paul our creator. Paul <laughs> Stanley. Yeah. It's, it's the fungi. The web itself is the fungi. Mycelium. Mycelium. Okay. Yes. Mycelium. Basically, that is the What? I believe that is a god. It's a god. Ah, yeah, okay. We're gonna call it a god. And it like, has the trade of like, nutrients, like the natural. Yes, and so fungi is transporting nutrients uh, by, in itself. And it's the way it's actually growing. So, as, uh, as he said, it's like neurons growing inside the soil, searching for nutrients in order to give back to the rest of the fungi. So that way it expands a lot. And then when it's time to spread, then it gives the mushrooms, the fungus, with the no, mushrooms, yeah. And with the spores, it just goes more and more far away. There's many functions about fungi, from curing cancer, to eating, to, to create to, to mushrooms, to uh, amazing a lot of things you can do and already does fungi, and it's very recently that we're actually studying fungi to get medicine, to get all kinds of things from fungi. And why I mention fungi? Because it's a, um, one of the two basic elements of uh, the living organism of soil that we destroy by tilling, and we destroy with many practices that we're using now in agriculture, and not only agriculture. Okay. I just want to add, uh, because I'm new to this uh, fun club of fun guy, <laughs> mm, but uh, I'm mostly, um, like it's mind-blowing, because we cannot even imagine, because it's a completely different way of functioning than what we know, and then I feel that uh, it's a little bit like with margins, it's always the best place when we are in front of something very different than we are, and uh, um, I think people are very confused, like we are very confused with these mushrooms and then it's just the fruit of something that is underneath. We don't have pictures, of, like we need pictures, like uh, this is an elephant and this is fungi. <laughs> and we don't, like it's just plants. And then uh, there is no center and brain and 
it's completely different than us. And I somehow feel it's like the very, even though we don't see it, but in soil it's a realistic thing, it's like embodiment of connectedness. But not of a, you know, not of like a, this is a bridge connecting these two things, because that's how I think. So this is, no, it's the connecting everything and moving things around. And I, I find it like my brain is in a very good place of being like, <laughs> about thinking about it. This book goes directly to the trend. Yeah, so here, watch the new seasons of Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> I use like the BBC and I'm not going to travel to space. I was kind of like, look at like, space, it has kind of like structure with the like networks, you know? Yeah. So it can be maybe like on a bigger scale, but on Earth you also have like this structure of space under the solid. Mm -hmm. Yes. And there is, I think there is also a parallel uh, development of our understanding of the universe and humanity itself that we are going towards organizations and structures that are more network-like mm -hmm. and appear together with our discoveries of, uh, of fungi and mycelium as an existence and studying it. So it's fantastic, the parallelism of these two. And it's, it's, it's awesome. Like, we, we are discovering nature now, actually. And we are discovering how we can actually mimic nature and it's much more efficient than the way we're doing it until now. It's like, ah, oh, 